Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about the Hall Effect. So put down today's title, it's going to be the Hall Effect. And before we get going, guys, make sure you have a basic understanding of how electric fields work and magnetic fields. Right, and I'll put two videos into the chat. Make sure you've watched them before watching this video, otherwise it just won't make sense. Okay, let's get straight into it. So first of all, we're going to do the following. I'm going to draw a box over here. So here is my box. Right now, it's a 3D box, okay? Right, it's a 3D box right now. We are going to say that um, we're going to pass a current from the right hand side of the box, yeah, going in, and the current's going to exit the box over here. So the current's going to exit the box over here. Right, so imagine inside this box over here, we've got loads of uh, charged particles, yeah? So let's say they're electrons at the start. So imagine we had loads of charged particles, loads of electrons which are free at the start. So loads of electrons inserted here. So, first of all, it sounds quite easy, but we're going to do the following. We're going to pass a magnetic field, notice a magnetic field, through the back of the box, through the front. So here we go, and yellow is going to be a direction of that magnetic field. So let's put this down over there. This is going to be equal to the magnetic uh, field direction. Excellent stuff. Right, now from here we're going to do the following. We know that there's a current passing through from over here. We know that there's a magnetic field. Hopefully we can identify that there will be a force experienced by these charged particles. Okay, so now let's talk about the force on this electron. First of all, Fleming's left-hand rule, a quick recap. So first of all, in Fleming's left-hand rule, we know that this is going to be FBI, where this is the direction of the force, this is the direction of the magnetic flux density, and this is the direction of the current over here. Hopefully if you do the Fleming's left-hand rule for this, you can see that number one, um, I'm going to do the current first, so let the currents go from right to left. You're doing the same thing as me in the video. The field's coming towards us. We can see that the charged particle has a force upwards over here. So there we go. We know that the force is upwards. Make sure you can do that yourself. Look, my thumb's pointing upwards over here. Right, so we now we know that the charged particle uh, experiences the force and it will now move upwards. Okay, so what will happen as time goes on? Well, all of those charged particles, don't forget, I've removed the charged particles. Uh, let's draw them back in again. All of those charged particles will experience a force. So obviously, look, so if I draw the other electrons over here, they all get a force upwards. So look, it's upwards over there, and it's upwards over here. They're all the forces uh, acting upwards here. Right, so now, what will happen as time goes on? What will happen to the box? Well, hopefully you can see that as time goes on, the top plate will gain all of these electrons. So I'm just going to erase it over here. So look, the top plate gains all the electrons. So the top plate over here, E minus, E minus, E minus, E minus, all the electrons at the top over here. Excellent stuff. Right, and the bottom plate, obviously because it's lost all that negative charge, it will have a deficiency and therefore become positively charged over here. Excellent. Right, so now what earth is going on here so what earth is going on here but now look we have a potential difference across the top and the bottom plate we have a potential difference across the top and the bottom plate right so hopefully you can remember that if there's a potential difference what will happen is there's now going to be an electric field between the top and the bottom plate so i'm going to draw it in green so look these arrows show you the direction of the electric field going up there we go. This is the direction of the electric field going upwards. So green is equal to direction of the electric field. Okay, right. So don't forget, we said that across the top and the bottom plate over here, we can get a potential difference. We can label that V, and which is going to be the voltage across the top and the bottom plate over here. Right, so... Now we're going to try and get an expression for the voltage. What would that voltage be? Well, in order to talk about this, we're going to have a talk about the forces acting upon the electron. So let's just draw one electron in the center. Here's one electron over here at the start. Okay, initially, due to the magnetic field, there was a force upwards. So initially, so I'm going to draw it over there, there's a force pushing up due to the magnetic field. The force due to the magnetic field. But eventually, something interesting is going to happen. What will happen is there will be a balance point. Eventually, the top plate will become so negatively charged, you can't put another electron onto it. It'll be really difficult for you to put another electron onto it. So what happens is there will be a repulsion force from the top plate. So look, that electric field is going to repel it from the top. So that electric field will now try and oppose that motion of the electron. Because the electron gets pushed up due to the magnetic field, but now look, because there's an electric field, 
we know it will be pushed down. It will be repelled from the top surface and attracted to the bottom. So there's a force due to the electric field on the electron. So force due to the electric field. Okay, we're just going to move over here and I'm going to draw the electron again. So let's just say this is the electron over here. At the top over here, it's the force due to the magnetic field. The bottom over here, it's the force due to the electric field over here acting on it. Okay, so hopefully we're okay with that, that there's a force due to magnetic field pushing it up. There's a force due to electric field pushing it down. There's a balance point here. And obviously that will build up a maximum voltage across the top and the bottom plate. Okay, so now let's do a bit of the maths here. So, and look at some equations, right. So we can set out the force due to the magnetic field, right at this point, so at this balance point over here, the force due to the magnetic field is equal to the force due to the electric field. Electric field. Okay, the next one then, force due to magnetic field. Right, hopefully you remember that for one charged particle, the force due to the magnetic field is going to be given by BQV. Okay, so over here I've defined them. B stands for the magnetic flux density measured in Tesla. Q stands for the charge measured in Coulombs. V stands for the velocity measured in meters per second. So that's that formula over here. And now, the force due to the electric field. Hopefully you can remember that the electric field strength, notice the electric field strength, is given by the force acting per unit charge. Yes, the electric field strength is equal to the force acting per unit charge. Let's just highlight that for you. Um, let's just define them again. There we go, guys. We've defined the electric field strength as the force acting per unit charge. So now we can get an expression for the force due to the electric field. Well, it will be equal to the electric field strength times by the charge. So therefore, we can put that over here. So therefore, over here, this becomes EQ. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so from here, I'm going to try and incorporate the voltage, the voltage, the potential difference across the two plates over here. Well, hopefully you remember that there's another expression for the electric field strength. The electric field strength is equal to, and I'll put it on this right-hand side, the voltage divided by the separation between them. So let's label it on here. Let's, this is D, this distance between the top and the bottom plate over here. So therefore, we can now plug this into this formula over here. So it becomes BQV is equal to V divided by D. Notice that this is the velocity, this is the voltage, or potential difference, and this is going to be the charge here. And then obviously the charge cancels out on both sides, then we can work an expression for the voltage across here. The voltage is equal to BVD. Excellent stuff here. So hopefully you can see that the voltage across the two plates is equal to the magnetic flux density times by the velocity times by the separation between the plates here. Excellent stuff, guys. Right, so this whole thing is called the Hall effect. So you'll find it in books called the Hall effect here, but it's a great example of combining your understanding of magnetic fields and electric fields into one. Make sure that if you see a question that has electric and magnetic fields combined, you know it's about equating the forces. So look, this is the main bit of the physics, equating the force due to magnetic field and the force due to electric field. The formulas are over here. You just plug in those ones in and then getting this expression at the end. And that's it for another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe button to keep my channel going. Comment below if you need any help and good luck in your studies. Goodbye.